found, I found myself in an interesting place because I often believe that preaching can do one of two things. Mm -hmm. One is that it can usher you into happiness, a change right. of disposition, a change of state, change of emotional being, or it can help usher you toward freedom. Mm -hmm. And often, this week especially wrestled with this text and tried to figure out the ways in which God was speaking and, and really placed it into a manner that I could say, you know, uh, as the elders would say, make it bite size so I can chew it too. Mm -hmm. All right. So I ask that you pray as I work to deliver this word and allow the Holy Spirit to speak and read through. So let us pray. Oh, loving God. Yes. Today has been a day full of beauty, full of learning, full of insight. Yeah. God, why not one more? Mm -hmm. yeah. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. Speak boldly, speak loudly. Yeah. Challenge us to be better versions of ourselves today. Yeah. Yeah. To you deserve the glory. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 The text I'll be speaking from today will be from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Mm -hmm. All right. Some special emphasis on verses 19 yeah. and 20. Yeah. Let our, ours, let our ears prepare to listen and our hearts prepare to receive the word of God. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, mm -hmm. to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. All right. And Jesus said, but Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit yeah. and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. Yeah. Right. And remember, I am with you always yeah. to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. All right. yes, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be God. God. I remember being present at my cousin's naval commissioning some years ago in Newport, Rhode Island. I remember two things. The very cold weather that day, it was about 25 degrees. I'm from Florida, y'all. I don't work for you. <laughs> and the overwhelming sense of pride our family experienced, my cousin finishing 14 weeks of rigorous training, classes, work sessions, sailing. He did it all. I remember standing among my family, wondering what was in store for my cousin, what came next as he began his career with the armed forces. Amongst many questions, I asked myself, what does it mean to be commissioned? Mm. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary states that being commissioned is to be authorized or commanded to act in a prescribed manner or to perform prescribed acts, to be charged. All right. In the case of my cousin, being commissioned meant being authorized and assigned a responsibility and duty to protect his country, his fellow American, and his family. Mm. Now, I suspect for you and I that being commissioned also carries a similar meaning, and that being commissioned maintains emphases on the responsibility and duty of sharing and living out the gospel message. All right. Mm -hmm. However, the inextricable imperialist history between church and state mm. has shown us, the emerging and current clergy, y'all in the room, that the lines tend to blur All right. between commission and omission. Mm. 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 Paradigms like the doctrine of discovery, mm. manifest mm. destiny, yeah. have given generations of Christians a perverse, a disturbed understanding of our call to evangelize the world around us. Oh, wow. yeah. And it's exploited the people who needed us the most. Mm -hmm. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, missionaries speak to us, congregations across the nation, reminding us how important it is to spread the gospel message abroad. We are trained to emphasize, to go, instead of focusing upon the most important part of the Great Commission, making disciples. Hmm? Right. Meanwhile, People living in the slums, the alleys, the back streets, the woods, and under bridges, just outside our sanctuary doors are considered invisible, mm -hmm. undesirable, mm -hmm. vagrant, mm -hmm. unwanted. Wow. People who deserve our care and our attention. People who would have gained Jesus' attention. Mm -hmm. All right. Wow. Mm -hmm. I found myself wondering how we, the body of Christ, have drifted so far from fulfilling our call to honor 
the simplest and noblest of commandments, to love one's neighbor as themselves. I found myself lost among the spiritual crux. I was at a crossroads between seeing a clear mandate to share the gospel message around the world and the obvious sense of neglect we Western spiritual leaders and congregants have given to the urban, the poor, the lost, and hungry. Come on. It becomes more convincing that we as Christians are struggling with kneeling for what is right, when it's easier right. to stand for what is socially acceptable. Right. 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 It's discouraging to observe the effects of crippling theology and of crippling religion when we lie to ourselves calling this nation a Christian. Come on, right. In short, I am amazed and baffled at the breakneck speed in which the gospel travels the world. Mm. When you compare it to the leisurely stroll it takes to cross the street. Oh, yeah. 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 Therefore, mm. I'd like to pivot my text today to address the gospel and the neighborhood before we talk about the gospel and the world. The text meets us in an interesting place. Matthew's account informs us that the, the disciples had returned home to Galilee after hearing rumors of a resurrected Jesus Christ. There, upon a mountain in Galilee, Jesus meets with the eleven but is met with skepticism, at least we're told in verse 17. Mm -hmm. Jesus, clothed in triumph, then proclaims to the eleven that he had all authority in heaven and mm -hmm. over earth. Right. He had conquered sin and death, help me, A.G. Right. <laughs> he had fulfilled the law, thus leading to what we acknowledge yeah. as the Great Commission. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, in verse 19, then charges the eleven to go. Therefore, and make disciples of all nations, mm -hmm. baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The text concludes with Jesus teaching them to obey everything Jesus had commanded the eleven to do. All right. And promising the eleven that he would be with them always. Mm -hmm. This text gave me three unique observations, and I promise you I won't go to the traditional one, so bear with me, and we may get happy at the end. I don't know yet, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the first observation from the text is that history is sometimes written and ruined by the winners. Oh. But liberating voices continue to edit, revise, and improve the narratives of our society. It is no secret that the Bible, as we've come to know it, has heavy European influence. All right. Subsequently, our understanding of scripture is not wholly and completely American. Mm. Thus, when examining scripture is an imperative matter for us to be discerning because we are ultimately lacking cultural context. Yeah. Mm. Now, help me out when I say we don't frankly know what we are talking about. Oh, this should come as no surprise. I mean, you know, we are in a nation that is colorblind to its own poison and vitriol and its nastiness. It's the nation of black, brown, Latinx, and Asian histories and herstories are beginning to be included in the textbook some 242 years later. This should not surprise us in a nation where women are still being viewed as inferior and within a country that is searching to regain what was once its own prophetic voice. Promoting one of the greatest voices of our generation, this is America. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm so thankful that the tarnished history is often edited by liberating voices. I'm so thankful that there are voices that echo out truth in the wilderness of our culture. I'm so thankful that there are voices that continue to preach equity in a society that is anything but. Right. I'm so thankful for voices which continue to carve out and call out injustices regardless of who and what and where and why they are committing them. Mm. I invite you to take a look at yourself and take inventory and ask yourself, what kind of voice are you bringing to the table? All right. All right. Simply put, are you liberating or are you stifling? Oh. Mm. The second observation from the text, I won't be for you too long, is that going in itself will not get you anywhere if making disciples isn't the objective. All right. Verse 19, at first glance, seems very straightforward to recall. Jesus commands the eleven to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and that of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Of course, English readings of this verse place emphasis on the going. All right. As if to say that by not going, that the purpose of sharing the gospel story is lost in itself. However, 
the Greek translation tells us a different story. Stay with me, Greek scholars. All right. Mm -hmm. Bless you. <laughs> what we discover in the Greek is that going is not quite the imperative in the sentence, or let me break it down, the driving force in the verse that we consider it to be, but it, it actually depends on making disciples in the verse. Now, to clarify, that word, parathentes, is in context a supporting element. If we were watching the Oscar Awards, it'd be a best actor or actress in a supporting role. All right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, it is an enhancing aspect of the verse and not a driving force. So the imperative remains solely and squarely with mathesute, or discipleship, making disciples. Now turning around to verse 19, it is understood that the focus isn't on going, but rather on doing, mm -hmm. making disciples. Mm -hmm. As Jesus was delivering the mandate to the eleven, we know that Jesus was charging them to leave the mountain and not necessarily the country. Sharing the gospel story and that of the resurrected Christ with the communities they encountered during their travels and to baptize, creating lifelong followers of the gospel. Then where do we get this behavior of going everywhere in the world, sharing, spreading the good news, and making disciples? We learn this behavior from a consortium of European nations who thought it necessary and proper to steal land, people, and resources that weren't there to have in the first place. We learn this attitude from those who continually preach a colorblind gospel based on equality instead of a color conscious gospel rooted in equity. All right. Wow. But now it falls upon us to undo this behavior. It rests with us to tear down this illusion of grandeur piece by piece and uphold the truth. The kind that ushers in the freedom only God can afford. The last observation of our text is that making disciples is a lifelong process. It's not bound or defined by one experience. <laughs> Verse 20 tells us that as Jesus is completing the charge in the Great Commission, that he's commanding the disciples to teach others as Jesus had taught them. <laughs> Salvation, in effect, is not a means to an end. Right. It is the beginning of a journey, one with struggles, questions, doubt, joy, All right. triumph, ultimately victory. I encourage you and others to remain strong in community and connection to Jesus and to those who follow him. Otherwise, we are falling short of the commission. Mm. As proclaimers of the gospel, I continually encourage you to always be diligent in this process of ministry, even when it's tough, even when it's painful, even when it's ugly and hurts like hell. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 instructs us to examine ourselves mm. to see whether we are in the faith. Mm -hmm. mm. Tells us to test ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are continually to work through and throughout our faith journey so that we may develop and grow ourselves and others as we live out our calling to love our neighbors. Mm -hmm. My family in Christ, the challenge today isn't to abandon Christian mission. I'm not telling you to do that, but rather to encourage Christian discipleship. Mm -hmm. All right. We are to treat the call to evangelism and discipleship not as an either or, but rather a both and. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We cannot have it the way we want it. Mm -hmm. We are to preach and share the gospel in totality. That's right. yeah. We're called to minister to the whole person, yeah. mm -hmm. regardless of background, disposition, socioeconomic status, orientation, gender, All race, right. ethnicity. Right. The list goes on. At the mm -hmm. end of the day, love God and love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. All right. If we take the gospel into our neighborhoods, then perhaps we would listen to and stand up for the women that say, me too, instead of protecting the men who are just boys being boys. If we take the gospel to our neighborhoods and our children can finally feel safe within our public schools. If we take the gospel into our neighborhoods, perhaps we can bring cities like Flint, Michigan, clean drinking water. If we take the gospel into our neighborhoods, then maybe black lives will finally matter. If we take the gospel into our streets, then potentially we can believe ourselves and we say one nation under God when we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. If we take the gospel to our neighborhoods, then maybe 11 o'clock may not be the most cool. segregated hour. Right. 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 If we right. take the gospel to our neighborhoods, then maybe we can stop trying to place right. Jesus back on the cross. Wow. 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 If we take the gospel mm -hmm. to our neighborhoods, we will bring the kingdom of heaven much closer to earth. Amen. Amen. Amen.